By 1974, North Vietnamese troops had violated the Paris Peace Accords and renewed their assault on the South. It was clear the Republic of Vietnam would fall. On April the 4th, at a military base in the South Vietnamese capital of Saigon, a strange cargo is being loaded onto an enormous C-5A galaxy. This is one of the largest planes in the world. The C-5A is primarily a cargo plane. Its hold is wide enough to carry tanks and tall enough to move buses. Above the cargo area, there's a small number of seats. Both the passenger area and the cargo bay are being pressed into service today. Dozens of Vietnamese orphans are being loaded onto the plane to be flown to safety. There are thousands of orphans to be flown out before the North Vietnamese take Saigon. Just the day before, American President Gerald Ford announced the start of this desperate mission of mercy, a remarkable effort called Operation Baby Lift. I have directed that C-5A aircraft and other aircraft especially equipped to care for these orphans during the flight be sent to Saigon. I expect these flights to begin within the next 36 to 48 hours. Captain Bud Trainer is in charge of Operation Babylift's first flight. Because of the last minute nature of the flight, they're running behind schedule. The plane is already five hours late and Captain Trainer wants to be in the air, the youngest of the 145 children have been crammed into the upper passenger section of the jet. There are 102 older children in the cargo area below. The cargo plane is heading for Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines. It's a two and a half hour flight. From there, the orphans will be sent to adoption agencies in North America and Australia. Cargo planes are easy targets. They're slow moving and large. The possibility of an attack is very real. Then, shortly after takeoff, as the plane climbs through 23,000 feet, the cargo door burst open and was torn off the fuselage. The air inside the jet is rushing out. At 23,000 feet, there's barely enough oxygen to breathe. The oxygen masks have dropped automatically. But on such an overcrowded flight, there aren't enough to go round. The ones that are available weren't designed to reach babies. Oxygen levels are dangerously low. Unlike the passenger compartment above, there are only a few portable masks for passengers in the cargo bay. And as trainer dives towards 10,000 feet, his plane is going much faster than it should, and he can't pull up. After struggling with his crippled jet, trainer's efforts finally seem to pay off. As quickly as it leveled off, the plane begins to climb again. The nose of the jet begins pulling up into the sky. Unless Trainer can gain some speed, his plane will soon stall. In desperation, he dips one wing, forcing the nose down. The plane is hurtling towards the ground at almost 500 kilometers per hour. Trainer and the rest of the cockpit crew have survived. Just minutes after the crash of the first baby lift mission, rescue workers are on the scene searching for survivors. 175 people survived the crash of the Air Force jet, but more than 150 have been killed. The investigation begins immediately. During the rush to board the aircraft, personal luggage was loaded but not thoroughly checked. This added to the speculation that a bomb may have been smuggled on board. The dogs find no trace of a bomb, and investigators find no evidence of explosive residue on the plane, but something had caused the cargo door to fail. Soon, the massive C-5As will be desperately needed to get America out of Vietnam. Finding out what happened to this one couldn't be more urgent. At the crash site, investigators are becoming increasingly frustrated. A great deal of wreckage has been stolen by scavengers. 
an important clue could be among the pieces taken away. To retrieve these parts, the Air Force offers to buy them back. Investigators do eventually recover the camera that was used by a film crew on board the plane. They hope it can show them exactly what happened. But the film inside the camera has already been removed. All C-5As are fitted with a computer system that records vital information about the plane's operation. It records engine settings, airspeed, altitude and hundreds of other parameters onto a magnetic tape. The system is called MADAR, Malfunction Detection Analysis and Recording System. It wasn't found at the crash site. The MADAR is eventually returned for a reward, but it proves to be a disappointment. As investigators continue to look for the cause of the crash, the situation in Vietnam gets worse. Two days after they receive the MADAR, the South Vietnamese president resigns. On April the 23rd, 100,000 North Vietnamese troops approach Saigon. On April the 26th, they find the cargo ramp and part of the pressure door of Trainer's plane. If investigators don't find the answers here, they may not find them anywhere. They're running out of time, and they're running out of leads. When the ramp is examined, investigators make a disturbing discovery. The C-5A has 14 locks holding the rear cargo door shut, seven on each side. The door recovered from the sea tells investigators that for some reason, three of the locks designed to hold it shut had either unlocked in flight or had never locked at all. The pressure outside the jet dropped. The air inside pushed with increasing force against the cargo door. Then, as the plane passed through 23,000 feet, with three latches unlocked, the pressure on the door was too much. But investigators still don't know why the locks failed. Before they can find the answer, Saigon is under siege. On April the 27th, the investigators take all of the evidence they can and leave. It's simply too dangerous to stay. Back in the United States, investigators continue their work. Since the C-5 is in service around the world, they need to know why three locks on the cargo door failed. Investigators discover something potentially alarming about the cargo plane's rear door. Parts from the C-5A were actually removed from the plane, cannibalized to service another cargo plane. The locks on the rear door of the C-5A are connected to each other by a series of tie rods. The rods can be lengthened or shortened to ensure the locks are completely closed. It's these tie rods which were removed from the Babylift plane. At the time, the enormous cargo planes were in constant demand. The tie rods were replaced before the Babylift plane left for Saigon, but for some reason they hadn't held. To try to figure out what happened, investigators rebuild one of the locks that was supposed to keep the rear door closed. Investigators aren't convinced that the problem is in the basic design of the lock. They suspect that before the plane left California, the engineers who replaced the rods didn't follow the proper procedures. After the locks were re-rigged, they should have checked to make sure they were working. That wasn't done. Without the check, no one would have noticed that the re-rigging was done improperly. When the door was opened and shut in Saigon, there was a warning that not everything was perfect. But 12 minutes after liftoff, as the plane continued to climb, cargo door burst open and was torn off the fuselage. The investigators have found their answers, and in their final report make specific recommendations that will make the C-5A safer. As a result, the Air Force designs a pin that slips through each lock. If the door isn't properly shut, the pins can't slide into place. 